including with this guy. It's his cue to feel attention starved. Sylvia Rourier, bonsoir from France. Hi, Sylvia. Pauline Buckles, hi there. Vicky Mora, good to see you. Lisa Stokes, well, I see we've already got some super chats. Thanks very much, guys. Sorry, I'm a little bit late. I think I'm two or three minutes late. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Blue-eyed Scorpio, up already. Thanks a lot. Debbie McClellan, hello from Glasgow. Grace C, at work listening. I hope I'm going to make this a interesting live for you guys. Uh, Stephanie, I'm glad that you're here. Bria as well. Bria left a really good little analysis, about eight-minute analysis of the Macbeth interview. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about it. Uh, from France, thanks a lot, Bria. Stacey M, glad you made it. D Moss, hi from Shropshire, UK. Julianne, hi from Canada. I'm sorry I'm missing a couple of you guys. David from Hawaii, Linda from Arkansas, Dave Dawn Pridmore from America, Irma from Finland, Christine, good to see you, um, Steph, I didn't quite catch that, Teresa from Indiana. Teresa, do you know about the Morphew case? April Lynn, hi, Sunshine Baby from Florida. Sounds like the right avatar there. Gay Lee, hi. Tommy Tang from Alabama, Lolita Morales, Montreal, Canada, um, Fire Walk With Me, <laughs> Hi from that's a good one as well, from Los Angeles, good to have a sense of humor about some of those things, uh, Jenny Rogers, hello from England, um, Pam Wolf from, I think that was, was that Rhode Island, Joe Seaton from the Netherlands. Um, okay, so quite a lot of you in the house, already 500 of you. So the format for this live is basically going to be, I'm going to take you through a personal anecdote from my life, from my family, um, dealing with drowning. And I actually had to call up my father and do a little bit of investigation with him. So I'm going to take you through that. Um, and then also through something related to um, substance abuse that's also from my family, um, so I'm making it quite personal. And then from there we're going to go into the notes that I took from Macbeth's analysis, and I'll see how far we're going to go through that. It could take a long time to go through that, or um, we can maybe say, well, look, we know where this is going, and then go into the next the next section which deals with um, Chris McDonough's on the ground uh, reconnaissance. There were some things that I agreed with and there were some things that I didn't agree with. How many of you here felt quite frustrated with yesterday's episode? Uh, I watched it at like midnight, hoping to see another episode of Macbeth and, and uh, by one o'clock in the morning it still wasn't on and then Two o'clock in the morning still wasn't on. Um, how many of you felt a little bit um, misled by, by that episode, by that last live? Um, I just sort of felt like it was about to happen, and I never kind of got the information, well, it wasn't actually going to happen. So apparently there are more hours of that, that interview, but... Um, I'm not sure if we're going to see them. I'm not sure if we're going to see it tomorrow. Olivia Voss, good to see you. Um, Steph says, I like the tour. There certainly were some interesting things there. Uh, it was just difficult for me. I know Bria was also watching from France. For us, we were staying up really late to watch something and then and then ultimately didn't see it. Um, I, I, I thought it was going to be a part two to the part one. So, so that's just how I felt. The terrain was interesting. I must say the area where uh, where, that, where the family stay in Beniel Road was a lot more wooded and, um, uh, what's the word, secluded than I expected. It was, it was 
different to what you see on Google Maps. It was a lot more overgrown, wasn't it? Something else that definitely stood out to me was him mentioning, oh, there's a creek down there. And I don't know if you guys caught in a, another episode, I, I, I said where, where, where media crew were flying over the area, um, I thought I saw stars through the, the foliage um, near the camp, and I thought, wow, you know, was that piece of metal or was it water? And I could have sworn that was water, and I think that's confirmation that, that – um, just on the other side of that trailer where the camper is, um, it drops down and, and then there's a creek over there. I think that's quite important. Snow lion, um, <laughs> not going to read that, but I, I get what you're saying. Mary Ann Moore, hi from Johnson City, Tennessee. Good to have folks here from Tennessee. Um, uh, Sammy, Sammy Lee, Teresa Moore. Uh, hi, Nick and baby Timmy. Timmy got very excited. I took him for a drive and there was a collie run, walk, going for a walk and he wanted to jump out the window. It took him a long time to calm down. Um, uh, Blue-eyed Scorpio, congratulations on hitting 50,000. Thanks a lot. 50.1, by the way. <laughs> but thanks very much. By the way, this is water. It's not vodka. Jody Landis, the picture is the key, hot truck plus warm clothes plus cold milk. Um, I, I, um, I'm going to put my hand up and say that I, I think the whole hot thing is overblown and it's exaggerated and I don't think it's really a factor because even in Macbeth's statement, he said something like um, that – summer was cold. So was it hot or cold? Um, if you look at how Candace herself was dressed, was it was it hot or cold? Um, the temperature of that day, I think, is the biggest guide. It was 78 degrees maximum Fahrenheit, 26 degrees Celsius, which isn't very warm. It's, be, it's sort of barely at that level where you would say, I want to go and swim kind of thing. Um, maybe if you're from England, that's hot. Uh, from where I'm from, it's on the on the coolest side of mild. Louis Coombe, hi, hi there. I, I don't know if you, and even if you say it was humid, I, I don't know whether you can take that and say it's hot. Um, it's not even the upper 20s in terms of, Celsius. It's not even the upper range of twenties. Um, just, just my view. Someone says humidity in Tennessee is brutal. Well, you know, you can make the case that it was hot. Um, I don't know if you can take it to the extent that 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 that, it, that is why summer lost to life. I, I, I don't know if you can make that stretch. Um, I, I think the circumstances, I, I think that's a distraction from what happened at the swimming hole. So that is where I want to kind of start off with is um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about something that happened in my family. It's part of our family history. I just want to get the notes that I made when I spoke to my father. Wow, Stephanie, 50.1, that's, that's really good. Very exciting. Thanks a lot, Stephanie. Stephanie's actually already contributed somewhere else. Um, so so she's actually given $100. Stephanie's really um, – thank you very much, Stephanie. Mean it. Um, where did I write those notes? Where are those notes? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. It's on this little sliver that I've pulled off. So um, I wanted to make sure I kind of quoted my father accurately and that I got the information not the way I remembered him saying it, but him actually saying it. So um, I, I asked him, so this is, this is the situation. I've got an older brother. 
and it's been part of the family legend that you know it also he was suddenly there was suddenly like this absence and they looked around and didn't know where he was and then my father fished him out of the deep end of the swimming pool so there was there was a there was also this period this unknown period of um him being totally submerged and then him being fished out, right? It was, it was exactly the same thing. And so I asked him, I said, how did you become aware that 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 he, he was missing, that he wasn't there? How did you kind of, what what kind of, you know, what indicated that? And, he, and it's like he said, well, we, we just missed him. It was just like, he even said to me later on on re- reflection, he said, I may have come up to him and, and sort of, you know, because I think at that stage I was two years old and I don't, obviously don't remember that. I, I don't know whether that's true, but at that point my brother was four years old, so he was a year younger than Summer was. And when I asked him how long do you think my brother was under the water, he said he said about two minutes, maybe even, even longer. And... Um, but but he also said, I'm not sure. I also asked him about the circumstances around that, but bear in mind that is going back decades. Um, but I think what he remembers is that, that we were all around the swimming pool anyway, and then suddenly my brother was no longer visible, and it took a while to, to register that. And then I asked him, you know, when you pulled him out, um, was he crying he said you didn't you didn't need to call an ambulance. There wasn't he wasn't unconscious. He wasn't choking. Um, he just kind of pulled him out, and I think he was distressed, but um, he was fine, kind of thing. And um, the odd thing is, something similar happened to my sister, but but in a totally different way, um, where phew, um, it was it had to do with her losing consciousness. And um, the doctor basically saying, if it had been another two minutes, there would have been brain damage, right? Um, so all I'm trying to say is, is that it, you don't necessarily need someone to be intoxicated for this to happen. It happens to young children all the time. And something I want to emphasize, and we are going to get to it when I deal with the uh, McDonough you know, reconnaissance part. Did you guys notice that the the um, the tree stump and branch was a lot more exposed when he went there than in other photos? Did you guys notice that? Did you guys notice that the length of that stump it wasn't just a branch sticking out that it was quite a long thing going underwater and then coming out. Do you guys notice? Okay, a lot of you guys saying yes. So what that suggests is um, that a couple of things could have happened. One is that, you know, in the video we've got, and that's some of the best evidence, in the video we've got of Summer, where she's actually um, flopping around in the water. She's jumping into the water almost kind of face first. Um, what is the chance that she could not have um, bumped her face or even landed so that her, her neck went like that, right? Hoff Rutter says, thanks for bringing common sense to this community. Hi, Timmy. Timmy's still sitting on my lap here. Thanks a lot, Hoff Rutter. Um, so just in that one area where, where you see the extent of that trunk, and we know that there's this little girl um, sort of jumping around in the shallow water. It means that she could have um, she could have knocked her head on that stump, right? She could have knocked her head on that stump, or she could have landed on it where it could have pushed her head back like that, right? Um, she could also have. I don't know if she's a, if she can swim that. For me, it's crazy the fact that whether Summer can swim or not hasn't been established. I would really love if anyone from the media are watching this, um, it would be really good to get confirmation on that. Can Summer swim? If Summer could swim, it's possible that if she was left alone for a little while, she, she was trying to swim between 
those underwater branches, you know, maybe playing some kind of game, either purposefully or she ended up um, getting caught in those branches, you know, caught under them or in them. And, you know, that could have been a factor. Of course, Macbeth doesn't really mention them at all. He doesn't mention that. Um, whereas Candace said something about it being um, a lot of trash lying around. Do you remember that? Stacey M., thank you very much. Pam, hi from New Hampshire. Naomi says, if the boys were removed, that's pretty significant. Stephanie says, my son had intense lessons and learned at five years. I could swim, uh, can I blow my own trumpet since today is a milestone day? I could swim 50 meters of butterfly when I, before I was five years old. Um, is that right? Um, yeah, I think I turned, I think I turned five in my first year at school and I could actually swim a length of butterfly in that, in that time. So, so, and, but the irony of all of that is my mother couldn't swim. So I was like a really good swimmer. I eventually swam for my state, um, but my mother couldn't actually swim. So let me just try and get to that comment. Um, just a second. Neoka's take on Tarot. Do you think that, do you think that could be Alison's voice in the video? No. That's just my opinion, but I don't think it is Alison's voice. Um, so something else, to, just while we're on the topic of my mother, as I say, my mother couldn't swim. When my mother was a, a young um, student, um, she, she, I think she was maybe 18 or 19 years old, she went to a swimming pool that was also quite deep, but it was a, one of the big Olympic-sized pools, but with quite an unusual deep end. And I, I don't think they realized she couldn't swim. And so what was happening was somehow she lost hold of the, the side of the pool and she started drifting slowly down. And when this happened, she obviously was like, oh, no, you know, um, I'm underwater and she didn't know what to do. And then when she hit the ground, she pushed herself back up. And then when she got to the surface, she took a breath and then sank back down again. And this is also something that happened. This is someone who's not a little child, not even a, not even a young teenager. And it was with a group of people right around and they didn't notice that she was actually kind of in a way – uh, struggling not to drown, right? And she's literally just going up the water column, um, catching her breath, sinking back down. When she reached the bottom, she'd kick off the bottom again and go up. And because she couldn't swim, she didn't know to kind of keep herself buoyant. And um, and ultimately, I mean, she survived that, but, you know, it was this sort of close call for her. And I'm just wondering whether something like that couldn't have happened with Summer if she couldn't swim and she went beyond that drop-off area. Do you know what I'm talking about? And there's definitely something tricky when you're not swimming in a swimming pool, but you're in a river scenario. You're in a sort of – you have this a lot in lagoons at the sea or, or on certain beaches. The, the sand goes to a certain point, then it drops off. And – if you don't know that area, um, it can be tricky, and if it, if it if you can't swim, it can be dangerous, right? What does Stephanie say? Even a good swimmer can be caught off guard. Yeah. So one wonders whether something like that happened, um, but I don't think it's. I think something like that is possible and even likely. But I think the other side of that is what were Candace and Macbeth doing? when this was going on. Now, Macbeth's story is that, is that it was all completely innocent. Candace wanted to pick flowers and Macbeth was looking at a TikTok video. You know, it was all perfectly innocent and, and then he emerges almost as the the rescuer, the lifeguard, the the hero. Um, and, and everyone lives happily ever after, except we know that they didn't kind of thing. Gigi Jardine. Thanks a lot, Gigi. Well, that's 
that's a that's an appropriate animation you've got there. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I must say um, some people aren't going to like me for saying this, but when I started this channel, I looked at some other channels that were out there, and and I thought, you know, I think I'm a a 50k channel, and it was it it took a long time to get here. It's taken. I don't know if it's two years, but it's taken quite a long time to get here. But when I started off, I thought, you know, I'm a, um, I am expect to be one of the big boys. And, and it was quite humbling how hard I had to work to, to get here. So we'll see. Um, what did Stephanie says you are? I told you that a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's different what you know and how you see yourself and how the public perceive you. It's not necessarily the same thing. Um, Boho Peggy, keep up the excellent work. We love your work in La Mita, California. I hope you guys are keeping cool over there. Olivia Vaz, I love how you blow your trumpet. <laughs> Thanks, Olivia. From Australia. How hot is it in Australia? AB, abnormality detected. Thanks for that. Thanks a lot for that. Stacy Candice spelled with a, a U is extremely irritating to me. Yeah, it's something to get used to. It's a bit like Shanann spelled with a apostrophe. Um, I'm just looking at some comments that I... Don't really want to repeat. Rhonda Rousseau, new subscriber here. Thanks, thanks for that. Um, so there's another family member I want to mention. I'm not going to say what our relationship is, um, but I think it is important that I bring it up. Erin Michelle, where... Where was the others while grandma was at the ER? That takes hours and hours waiting, not quick. I, I am, I'm not sure if I believe that grandma was at the swimming hole, to be, to be honest. Um, I'd like to see that confirmed. But I don't know whether CCTV would show in the vehicle. Um, in, in any event, the story is that um, grandma was somewhere else. Whether she's sitting in the car or somewhere else, I think is a different factor. Something else I noticed, um, it looks like that this is going to be a narrative we're going to have to deal with over the long term, is the the hot day, hot car story. And, I, and by the way, that's the story Candace wants you to be talking about. I mean, she mentioned it three times in her last statement. She didn't mention it right in the beginning. She's only mentioned it now, right? So... Um, one thing I noticed where um, Chris McDonough parked his car, if, if I've got my information right, there, there's like a canopy near the swimming hole and there's no problem parking in the shade of that canopy. So I don't know, unless you idiotically just parked in the middle of the sort of, you know, randomly in the sun, then it would have been certainly warmer, but, you know, you can also roll down the window if it's warm kind of thing. Um, that's what most people do. Um, so, so in terms of, and you're going to see where I'm, where I'm going when I talk about this. So this family member of mine, um, I, I was talking about this family member to someone and, the person responded, your blank, you know, in other words, your relationship to this family person um, wasn't a drug addict, but a junkie, right? Not So not just using drugs, but really on the far end of that. And my relationship with this particular family member is that as although I love this person and although I've tried to um, 
invest in our relationship. It's, it's really been undermined by that behavior and also by a lot of, of lying, a lot of habitual lying. And, and I can say from firsthand experience that drug addicts are natural liars. Drug addicts are the best liars in the world because it's second nature to them. They lie about everything. And they are hiding, they're constantly hiding what they're doing or not doing, right? And I think it's very, very difficult even for the best lie detectors. And in that sense, I'm not talking about polygraphs. So I'm sure polygraphs would probably be quite effective in that respect. But I'm talking about human lie detectors, people who do this for a living. On drug addicts, I'm not sure whether they'd be as good as, as non-drug addicts because drug addicts are natural liars. They have been lying their whole lives, right? And I've said, it's people who know me know the statement, um, not all liars are murderers, but all murderers are liars. Now, I'm not trying to say that what happened to Summer was deliberate, but that covering up could, could be quite easy, could be second nature to someone who's been doing it all along. Does that make sense? So I do want to bring in the, the drug narrative into the story, and that is different to the hot car, hot day narrative. In other words, if you want to say it was a hot car, hot day, then, well, off you go and it's, you know, you can blame the weather for what happened to Summer. Is, is the weather also why she's still missing? Did a tornado come out the sky and carry her away? Do you want to blame the weather for what's going on? Or is it the weather or human error? Stephanie will know where that statement comes from, right? Is it the weather or human error that's, that's, that, that we are sitting at day 38 of this disappearance that no one can explain? Um, let's just look at some of your comments. Uh, Blue Eyed Scorpio says, I want to see what's on all the cameras that day. Yeah. Jessica Cross, the orange soda belongs to Summer. Did it remain in the car? Good question. It's a good question. Um, also, there were no fishing. There was no fishing equipment, according to Chris McDonough, in the vehicle. So that's also a little bit questionable. She never got out of the car. If the soda is still there, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, we would want to look into the vehicle. Stephanie says, please keep it classy in chat so your comments aren't hidden. Uh, Half Ratter says, I think that neglect is behind whatever happened to Summer. I think it's all, I also think it's neglect, but I think it's, it's more than neglect. I think it's reckless neglect. So, for example, when my brother went into the deep end, now bear in mind, he came out and he, and he's, he's, he's um, lived happily ever after kind of thing. Um, that didn't happen with Summer. And a difference could be that, you know, there, there was no intoxication, it was a family gathering, and the next thing my father noticed my brother in the swimming pool and he fished him out. In a situation where there is intoxication or worse, other things besides that, you can expect that length of time to notice something to go on much further. And, Macbeth was at pains to stress that he notices everything, that, that he's a very observant fellow, except that he doesn't notice the time. And Bria made a really good comment, a really astute comment, which is if you are on your phone all the time, if you are either looking at TikTok videos or you are, um, I don't know, snapping photos or doing whatever, then, then you, are, you have your phone in front of you and you can see the time. 
it tends to be there. It tends to be part of the display. Um, and something that I think is maybe missing from Macbeth's narrative is, didn't he say, and I could be wrong, um, you know, I may need to review all of this and maybe you guys will know this better than me, but did he say to his mother when he was coming home, because normally that is what happens when you go, when you're a, um, a minor and you go with a friend somewhere, you sort of say, mom, can I go? And mom says, yes. And we know that that was brokered that way. And then it's also, um, but, but be back at this time. And so what, what, what was that time? What time were they supposed to be back and what time were they back? And I, I think that's quite an interesting question in two ways because one of kind of my original understanding of this whole thing was that they actually came back early. That was my original understanding was that they came back prematurely. Why? Because something happened to Summer and um, uh, I think the boy was apparently upset or... Um, you know, something like that. And so the afternoon actually ended prematurely, but I could be wrong. The other side of it is that they could have been longer than, than they should have been. I don't know. Something that Chris McDonough stresses, which I think is quite, quite, um, quite a salient point, is that did they have lunch? If not, why didn't they have lunch? What were they doing instead of having lunch? I mean, they were, went to enough places to buy lunch. So, so you know, why weren't they having lunch? And, I mean, they, they had milk in the vehicle and, and other substances. So why weren't they having lunch? Unless the lunch came out. Yeah, um, Christine says Macbeth was... Um, said he was dizzy in the car. That's according to one version. Because of the tea, yeah. Someone says no lunch, neglect. <laughs> Alcohol is their food, yeah. If, if that's your priority, you know, if your priority is to drink or to get wasted, you're not really going to be thinking about food. In fact, food is going to interfere with that, that, um, that sort of chemistry, that chemical process. Mom eats, but kids starve. <laughs> I shouldn't really laugh, but um, weed habits, drug habits, yeah. Definitely should have been some snacks. Okay, so uh, let me just see what I've got written down here. Um, so after I've gone through the, uh, the notes that I've taken, I want to talk to you guys about what I think happened in the live from um, Chris McDonough. They asked him, so what do you think happened? And he wasn't prepared to answer that. I, I want to sort of address that. I think it, it is important to address it. And then I want to also make a suggestion how the TBI can, with, with without being snarky, I'm sorry, without being critical or snarky, how can the TBI possibly um, improve their search? A simple thing. It's not going to cost them anything. Um, and, and just put that out there. So let me just get to my notes. Um, it's, I've got quite a few notes. I hope I'm going to be able to read them. I hope I'm going to be able to read your comments. Uh, so someone asked, what is the nature of Macbeth and Candace's relationship? I think there's a third dimension to it. I think it, it's what is the nature of their relationship? What is the nature of Macbeth's relationship with Summer? And then what is the relationship of um, Macbeth with Candace, sorry, with, with Summer under the supervision of, of Candace? Timmy, I think Timmy wants to want some more attention. You know, as we're getting to the nuts and bolts, he really wants. 
he wants to make sure that that um, I'm on the top of my game, that I'm taking care of him and remembering everything I need to remember. Okay, so um, so these are a couple of the notes that I made. The first one is that they recorded the interview at 6 p.m. I think it was on the 20th at Allison's home. Um, just to give us context, thanks a lot, Heather West, for that. Thank you very much. Um, and one of the first things that was mentioned was that the TBI has Macbeth's phone. Now, do you think that is innocent? Do you think that the TBI, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, have Macbeth's phone because there's nothing on it? It's, it's all innocent. He doesn't take TikTok videos. He doesn't have any photos. Um, you know, all of the dirt is on Candace's phone. What do you guys think? Why do you think the TBI has his phone? Um, the, the other thing that's quite in interesting is how did the whole thing come about on June 15th? And, and it sort of comes about mutually. It sort of comes about on the one hand that... Um, Candace lets him know that that she's coming to she's bringing grandma into town and he then says well why don't you come over he invites her over Diane critical hit thanks a lot Diane so I don't know to me that that shows quite a lot of familiarity they're actually communicating via phone um, and that I think if you want to address this question, what's the real nature of their relationship? I think you've got to ask it in, in quite sort of blatant terms. What's in it for, for him? What is in it for this 15-year-old teenager? What is in it for him? I think there's a quick answer to that and one that he provided himself in the interview, and it is where he says something about they went into the they went to the hippie house and I think he's asked, did you go in? And he says, no, I'm not, you know, they wouldn't let me. I'm not, I'm not old enough. I'm not, um, uh, I'm trying to remember how he put it. Um, got another notebook here. Uh, what did he say? Just trying to get the oh he says I can't go in I'm under age so so I think if you're asking what's in it for him in a basic way we know there are a lot of teenagers who um, sort of hang around certain people because they are a doorway a key a conduit to getting alcohol or other things so, so that may have been how it started with Candace, but did, did it go somewhere from then? We know how, how alcohol is used to, you know, it, it's a, a kind of a common classic theme. You ply someone who's younger than you with alcohol and, and then all sorts of things happen. And I think one's got to ask that question. Did that happen? Was it happening? Um, the other thing that I think is important to mention is in his own version of events, he's sitting on the bank with Candace when Summer is swimming by herself. So in his own story, he's not swimming with Summer. He's not swimming with his friend. He is sitting with Candace and, um, and then he says something about I threw my shirt down and, and then he ran off to to try and save Summer. One wonders what exactly Candace was doing um, and where exactly were they? Um, let me just look at some of the other points that I wrote here. Um, I've actually stolen this from Bria. I think it's Bria who said, what does just hanging mean? What does just hanging out mean? What was it? 
mean to be just hanging out? You know, when Macbeth is just hanging out, what is he actually doing? When Macbeth is hanging out with Candace, what is what are they actually doing? Right? They high. So 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 this is where we go up a level where I think you've got to stop being naive and stop being dumb, right? And, you know, you might have someone saying, well, you're being judgmental or that's unfair or Toggle Tran, thanks a lot, Toggle. Um, Toggle's also on Patreon, quite actively uh, involved there. Um, I think we've got to graduate from this level of almost naivety to where we basically say, is it true or false that that drugs are part of the fabric of this case and the narrative of this case, not because I say so, not because you say so, not because the media says so, not because some creator somewhere says so, but because they are saying so, right? In other words, it's coming from them. We're not imposing it on them. We're not looking at them and going, hmm, I wonder... We are, we are getting it from them. And so that's one of the things that comes from Macbeth's statement is he talks about a drug dealer. He also talks about Candace getting high and drunk and losing track of summer, something that he, she was apparently in the pattern of doing. Now, you could say that that's not true or is exaggerating or there's more to it than that or it's the pot calling the kettle black. But the point is... The ease in which he acknowledges that seems to indicate that that's a reality. So wherever you are in whatever ivory tower or high horse or whatever, and we're going to deal with how we come to all of this in, in, a, in from a different direction in a moment. But it's certainly part of Macbeth's narrative, that aspect. We also know that it was part of Alison's narrative as well, where she said something like, Candace gets drunk or, or wants to get drunk every night at half past five, right? And then you've got the, um, the the sort of face value thing of Candace appearing on camera seeming stoned or something, seeming like, you know, the lights are on, but um, not everyone is home. Some people are out drinking kind of thing, right, in, in terms of, of our first-hand ex experience. Then there's also, um, I think, the criminal record. And you can go in onto Plunder's channel and you can actually see where there are specific instances cited by officers saying Donald was, you know, stumbling around, they could smell the alcohol in his breath and all that kind of thing, right? Um and, and on and on and on, we can go on and on emphasizing this. And what I found quite interesting was when I early on sort of put up my hand and I said, hmm, the fact that Don's got this reddishness to his cheeks, I wonder whether that's not a sign of um, being an alcoholic. And peop some people were extremely upset. That it was like, no, 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 that is sunburn or um, uh, I don't know. But please don't accuse this man of that, you know. And wh wh why not? I mean, and it, how has it turned out to be now? You know, one of the things he said, I think, even to the reporters is the lesson he's learned from what has happened is he's going to start drinking less. You know, the lesson that he's going to learn is is that. And I, I don't know, this, is there another case where, where that was also said, where, where someone said the same thing? I can, I can feel that that is true. I'm just trying to access which case it was. Where someone, someone's response to the whole thing was that they were going to drink less in future. Um, but let me let me now come to this from a few other directions, and it's actually quite curious when we do this. In the John Bonet Ramsey case, and let's let's get some interaction from you guys. In the oh that's oh, that is right it's the West Memphis three case Yvonne Phillips thanks a lot going fishing alternate meaning yeah that's quite interesting as well 
It's a little bit like Zanny the Nanny, isn't it? So I want to get your um, feedback here. Um, so we're going to talk about three cases now, John Benet Ramsey, Madeleine McCann, and Casey Anthony, just to illustrate this point before we move on from it. And the, the, the question is, answer with a one yes and a two no. Was alcohol slash intoxication slash drinking a factor in the John Benet Ramsey case? Let me ask you again. Was alcohol, drinking, intoxication affecting the John Bonnet Ramsey case? One for yes, two for no. So I'm seeing ones and twos. I quite like that because it means some of you might learn something or, yeah, some of you might learn something. So what I'm going to tell you now is, Someone put a three. So what I'm going to tell you now is the housekeeper actually spoke about um, – She the, the housekeeper wrote a book. Uh, she, she started writing a book, the, the Ramsey housekeeper, Linda Hoffman Pugh. And she, in, in the first sort of chapter of her book, spoke about Patsy – of her suspicion that, that Patsy – got into a bottle of, I'm, I'm not sure what it was, I can't quite remember the name, but she named it in in that chapter. I, I should remember this. but And what that suggests is that, certainly from the housekeeper's perspective, that, that that's a possibility. Bear in mind also it was Christmas, right? And bear in mind these were a wealthy family. And that's something that's also quite an interesting thing. I dealt with this very early on when I started investigating this case, what is the alcohol abuse? What is the difference between alcohol abuse between very wealthy people and very poor people? And the difference is that poor people are binge drinkers, whereas rich people are heavy drinkers. So it can actually be worse. Alcoholism can be worse with uh, rich people. But I think they're also able to get better treatment. Also, as you say, fire walk with me, holiday equals drinking. And I've mentioned this already. Did Candace have a reason to drink? Well, her father had died five or six weeks earlier. Did this youngster have a reason to drink? Well, he was apparently stressed at home. He was saying, and I think this has been underappreciated in what he was saying, is he, he was getting stir crazy. He wanted to get out the house. And I think what's very weird is that when – when he comes back, in terms of his narrative, when he comes back, um, I think McDonough asks him something like, did you notice what clothes she was wearing or did you notice if she was awake or asleep? And he says, no, I couldn't wait to get back into the house. Quite a quite a change, isn't it? So he, he leaves the house, like he can't wait to, to get out, but, but after whatever happens, he can't wait to get back in. Quite interesting, wouldn't you say? Okay, so um, so that's the that's the um, Ramsey case. Linda Lowry, thanks a lot. So that's the Ramsey case. I'm not saying it's like this huge um, kind of kaleidoscope of of alcoholism or something like that. Just that alcohol may may well be a factor here, and in in the space of the something like someone drinking. Could something have happened to John Bonet, right? I think it's something that hasn't been explored in a lot of detail. So the the um, the other thing that is I think quite interesting with the with the McCann case is you had exactly the same argument. Is that I think um, one investigator from CBS I've actually communicated directly with him on Twitter said that. Um, I can't quite remember the exact amount, but it was something like that. They went through nine bottles of wine every night, right? Nine bottles of wine. And on that night, the night that Madeline disappeared, something like only four or something like that. Now you might think, well, that shows that alcohol wasn't a factor. But I, I, I think of it in a little bit of a different way. But um, 
whether you think it was a fact or not in the McCann story, it does come up. It comes up. In fact, the last thing they do after putting Madeline to bed and before they go to the restaurant is they drink a glass of New Zealand wine. So, so it is definitely a factor in the stories, right? So that's the McCann case. Then we go on to Casey Anthony and we say, was drinking and partying a factor in, in that story, right? And I don't think you've got to be like an expert on the case to say, you know, Casey was, was a really young woman. She's quite attractive. She, she had a new boyfriend. He was like a club owner. And we've seen all seen the photos, right? So just in a broad way, I think one can, can make the case that in the Ramsey case, in the McCann case, and in the Casey Anthony case, you have a sort of a fabric where there's potentially sort of enjoying yourself in a holiday sort of situation, a holiday spirit, a fun sort of spirit, a sort of spirit of, you know, let down your hair and, and kind of thing and, and um, you know, enjoy yourself. Meanwhile, there's a little child that comes to harm within that situation. Is there a link between the two? And if you say, is there a link between the two, you could also say, isn't there a link between the two? Especially if this is happening, it's not just happening once, it's happening regularly. Isn't it an accident waiting to happen? And if you're doing it regularly and things are happening, isn't the outcome foreseeable and thus you should have known better? Okay, so Bria says here, Scrub says, when, when I was 15, I didn't cuddle with five-year-olds. Good point. I also found that quite interesting where he said something like, um, you cuddled with her. You know, I actually, um, before I live, live here where I live now, I, I lived in a, a, a double-story house um, with a single mom. She stayed downstairs. We weren't in a relationship, but I stayed upstairs. She stayed, she, she stayed downstairs. And I think it was something like the second night after I moved in, her daughter who was, um, I don't know how old, five, six or seven, but, very, but a little girl, um, just like came into my bedroom and got into the covers, got, got under the covers with me. And I sort of said no, and I kind of sent her away. I was sort of quite astonished because, I mean, I basically just – moved in there and I sort of you know went to her mother and I said you know do you know this happened kind of thing and she said oh oh um I think she and she, she said something like she misses the previous tenant because they they did that all the time and I, I was like I kind of did a double take you know how could you how can you let your daughter do that um you know I just found it really really odd um and then I guess one's also got to wonder from the perspective of the little girl, what, what is going on there? Well, she doesn't have a father. She's with a single mother. But it's nevertheless, I don't think it's appropriate. I really don't think it's appropriate. And um, it, it never happened again, but there's, there's also more to that story that, that I can tell you in terms of the mother and, and what is going on with the father and, and other stuff there, but with the, I mean that's a separate issue. Um, what else? What else have I got here? So Macbeth calls Candace. Says I asked if they could come over. In other words, Candace and Summer. And what one wonders what is going on there? Does Macbeth want some? want access to certain substances, what more than that, as Loki would say. Um, and then there's also this thing that the kids went to work with Don. That's what I was told. Now, how does that square with anything? You know, if the kids went to work with Don, then were they at home, were they really at home when, when Summer got home? 
Would they even have known when, when Candace got back? Would anyone have known where, when Candace got back or when she should have gotten back? Well, the, I think the only person who would really know is Grandma. Um, so the other thing that I think was really interesting was at 11 o'clock that, that, that Macbeth says um, he arrived there at 11 o'clock and then he changes it to 10. That's quite a huge difference. It's an hour. And, you know, he. Uh, how long did it take for him to speak to Chris McDonough? I mean, how long had, had he been thinking about it or whatever? Um, you would think that by then he would know what time all of this happened. And I found that a little bit um, sort of tricksy and like taking a chance. Because if he can move the timeline up by an hour, then then there's an hour less to have to explain. So I found that a little bit odd. And then his ex his explanation was he doesn't you know he's very observant, but he just doesn't know anything about time, just like Candace. Um, so did you guys find that strange? Okay, so um, there's a quote from him, I'm not good with time. And he says, someone said to him, do you want to go fishing? Let's just uh, deal with that comment. Jessica Cross, he stacked the milk and grocery boxes over the left side and sat some in the middle on the pillow beside him. He distances himself from this, in my opinion. Yeah, it's definitely odd. Um, and I think something else just to note is that he places himself in the back seat with Summer. He's sitting in the back seat with Summer. And he kind of puts the milk between himself and Summer, which seems a bit odd as well. And I think I think what is a critical piece, possibly a critical piece of evidence here is the pillow. What is going to be found on that pillow if the pillow is still findable? Sorry, if the if the pillow is anywhere, what, what are they going to find on that pillow? And just think about it in a broad way. Um, you going swimming for twenty minutes, or fishing? Um, that's the other side. If you were going fishing, were you going to go and fish for twenty minutes? We're going to fish while we're getting grandma's prescription. Anyway, so you, you go fishing or swimming. Well, what are you doing with a pillow? Who fishes with a pillow? Who swims with a pillow? What else can you do with a pillow? In a car or, or out of a car? Someone says teenagers don't care about time. Um... Sometimes you care about time in the way that you can, um, I don't know, stay out longer than you should or something like that. Someone says, I have a pillow in my car. Okay. <laughs> Someone just put up a one there. I usually fish with a fishing pole. <laughs> Why are they sleeping on milk jugs with a pillow in the seat? That's a really good point. Mediocre comedian, that's a really good point. Um, he describes some as like a sister. Um, I, I don't know about you, but do, do you think that Macbeth is a, a wonderful young man who, who likes hanging around a, a little five-year-old because, uh, you know, he wants to look after her like a big brother? He, he sort of wants to spend his afternoon being a big brother. Do you think he's that kind of guy? Do you think he is going with... Um, Candace to sort of help her babysit her child. Do you think that's what, like, you know, when you ask the question, what's in it for him? 
Do you think the answer is babysitting and playing a big brother when how he's feeling in the home situation is stir crazy and he's trying to get out? Do you think that's what teenagers want to do during the summer holidays is volunteer to look after five-year-olds and and sort of um, help their mothers look after five-year-olds? He gets something. Yeah, I think that that's that one's got to look at. And I think the other side is, what does Candace get? What does Candace get out of getting this kid possibly drunk, possibly high, possibly just that he's enjoying himself? Maybe maybe it's all it, it is very innocent in that respect. Dan Feliciano, well, thanks a lot, Dan. Um, so. What we really want to do is move the, the scale along. Is it there a little bit of intoxication? Is there a little bit more than a little? Is it sort of moderate to average? Is it above average? Is it um, excessive or is it extreme? Where do we move this, this thing along that scale? And this is why I sort of say... I, I, I um, brought up that, that book on the scout mindset in a previous live where you, you let the map form itself. You, you don't decide, you know what, I think he just had one twisted T or I think that he got totally stoned. You try and get a, a, a real sense of, of the level of what we're talking about from what you can see right in front of you, but it takes time to pay attention to that. And how you don't pay attention to that is you start throwing out labels, right? You start throwing out kind of judgments. And what you want to do is make inferences based on what you know and can see and from their own words. Someone just, um, Hannah Cavley. Thanks a lot, Hannah. What's your thought on the call from Don the day of that? That's a good point. When you said something about a guy creeping around. So, first of all, I think that is an attempt to um, to point the finger towards a third party to say there's a there's a there's a what how did Patsy say it? There's someone out there. <laughs> it's something like that. It, it's trying to impute a kind of an abductor, right? It's trying to conjure someone like that. Um, if that was true, why wouldn't Don bring him up at the very first press conference? Why wouldn't he bring him up right in the beginning? Why wouldn't the law enforcement bring that up and also bring up a description? Even if they, even if he didn't see the guy's face, he could say, well, he was dressed in baggy jeans and whatnot and whatnot. So I don't really believe that that is true. I believe this is a ploy and I don't know whether it is coming from Macbeth or coming from Candace or coming from all three of them, Candace, Don and Macbeth, I don't know. You, you must bear in mind if there's not a scapegoat here, if there's not someone else who's responsible, then someone else is going to be responsible and then the finger is going to be pointed at you. So I think that's what this is all about. It's to say, well, there's some other guy creeping around. Let's go. Let's go and run in that direction. Let's let's run after a phantom. Okay. I think the fact that Don doesn't bring it up himself is the reason why that that is highly questionable. That whole thing. Um, we will know whether Don did call. You know, we, we from the phone records, we'll know that that Don did call and how long they spoke. But we don't know for a fact what was said. So in terms of your other question, and what about the fact that Don wasn't at work? I, I don't know whether that's a fact. I, I've kind of been saying from the, from the beginning, do we know for a fact that Don was at work or not? Is there a co-worker that can vouch for him? And I, I don't know whether we know that. And that, is, I think, is making this case difficult and problematic because 
if you add on to the the schema of this case, it suddenly develops a whole nother layer and it's becoming more and more complicated and uncertain and you don't know where to set the boundary, right? Um, uh, in terms of the text from the dealer saying it's done, that's getting a little bit hearsay. Um, I, again, I think what, what you can take out of this is um, the whole idea of drugs entering the narrative. And I, now I am going to share with you a thought I had. And when I say that, it means it's an idea. It doesn't mean that that I'm saying it happened. I'm saying because of the information that that is that is being addressed, that is that is being brought forward, this this thought bubbles to the surface. Is it relevant? I don't know. Is it material? Does it have any merit? I don't know. But the fact is, it's um, something that I'm thinking about. And, and the th thought I'm having is, is there a third party that may be involved not so much in the immediate incident, but in, in the relay? So in other words, let's say something did happen to Summer um, at the swimming hole and let's just say somebody close to Summer covered it up and then that, and then they asked another person for help to, to do the next step of that process. Someone who is also a criminal, someone who's also got those sort of resources then if that is the case, then you are going to have a huge job finding a person in this case. And one wonders, did something like that happen with Rose Bly? Could something like that have happened? Right? So, so what, what this does usher in is the possibility of a third party. And Don's saying, you know what? Summer is miles away by now. She could be in Mexico. Um, on the one hand, you could say that is misdirection, but but could it also be him knowing something? So there was, I think, another super chat here. Judy Hammer, much respect. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, I think someone provided a super chat, but I seem to have missed it. Maybe not. Okay, so, but I, I don't really want to go into that area right now because we just don't know. And uh, someone on Twitter was telling me about two other missing children that, that disappeared in the area, one really not far away. And without even knowing the answer to, to the questions I was about to ask, I, I kind of thought, I really don't think this goes anywhere. Um, I know people want to go into these sort of areas, but anyway, and so my, my next question was, okay, when did these incidents take place? And I think the answer was 1957 and 1960. And what that kind of suggests is whoever did this, if he was 10 years old when he did it, would be 70 years old today. You know, it's not relevant so, uh, TX Angel, I just found your channel. I think you're doing a great job. Thanks. Did you find my channel like right now, like today? It's quite amazing that Rose Coleman, thanks a lot, Rose. You sort of feel like people, sh you know, if they don't know you by now, <laughs> but I guess we the, the world's not so small. Green Eyes, why doesn't age swimming video match his statements? I don't quite know what you mean by that. So, again, I think you've got to use the um, the evidence we've already got, and I think a really good piece of evidence is that that video taken by Candice at the at the swimming hole, and it, it gives you so much. It gives you the the location that that Summer's in, and she's gone quite far out. It shows you how she's swimming, how she's sort of jumping into the water times that by 10, like, like imagine she carried on doing that 
another 10 or 20 minutes, what could have happened? Um, how much further out could she have gone? Uh, how, um, you know, what could have happened? Mediocre comedian, Don and Candace are collaborating and Macbeth is an uncomfortable side note. Um, if you guys watched my question mark, if you guys watched my um, previous video, I um, kind of lost my train of thought now. Um, what was I going to say? Um, I'm, I'm trying to sort of make the case that Um, it's a little bit difficult to talk about this stuff because I don't want to be too explicit. You know, it's you've got to toe the line in a certain way. Um, I don't put, let me just put it this way. I don't think that Macbeth is directly involved in the sense that, um, you know, the the custodian of summer is Candace. So, so Candace is who you really want to look at as, as being responsible for summer, right? Nevertheless, I do think Macbeth knows more than, than he's saying. Uh, and, and I think the same is true of Candace and Don. I think some people have asked a question about him being coached, and I think Chris McDonough was quite dismissive of that. I think it's quite difficult to imagine after 38 days that that he hasn't thought about this a lot and, the, and, and we know for a fact that even though he said the TBI has asked them not to communicate with one another, Candace with Macbeth and Macbeth with, with, with Candace, we know David Dodson said he actually found them face FaceTiming. And... I think somewhere else, I think, was it his mother, said something like, um, Candace called him on the way to being polygraphed when he was at work to, to, to kind of get their story straight. So I, I don't know how you can be dismissive about the idea of him being coached. Um, I think it's a possibility I think it's definitely a possibility. Hannah Cavley, one thing I noticed about the team doing the interview, you yawned at awkward moments. Yeah, to me that's very um, loosey-goosey because you can't see his face and so that's quite difficult to, to draw any inferences from. One thing I was looking at the last time I watched it was his mother picking up like a, a pad and a pen and wondering was she trying to, to signal with that? But it's easy to start overthinking these things as well. Hawk Verity, look forward to your voice, Nick. I think your view is on point. Thanks a lot. Um, forever Young, please slow down the chat. I actually did. The chat is slowed down. The slow mode is on. It's just that there are 2,000 people in in uh, in. in watching now, which which is another new record. I'm not quite at the level of the other channel, which I think had 8,000 people. <laughs> His voice is changing. Okay. Kathy Suter, love your easy to understand, forcing us to think before jumping to conclusions. Okay, well, let me go on here. Um, I show, I sh this, is, this is what Macbeth was saying. I show her a lot of attention, not weird attention. I'd give her a piggyback. And I was just wondering, what would he do in the water? And, you know, if you think about a, the situation just in a very broad terms without putting a name or a face, you have a situation here where you have a young boy swimming and you have a... a little girl in a swimming costume and they're sitting on the back seat alone together in the car at times, right? That's just the situation that, that, that is that way. The other thing is the possibility that he may be drinking more than he said he was drinking. And then you potentially have that situation as well. 
Um, I don't really, I don't really know whether that area is that relevant to go into. Um, it could be. It's difficult to know in this situation because there's so much that is dysfunctional, and that's an area I want to touch on respectfully, in terms of um, the people that we're dealing with in this case. So. Um, I think it's quite a challenge in a way to try and interrogate um, this case because the, the strata that they're on in society is people who are struggling, um, dysfunction is kind of normal. Um, but you've got to look at what is beyond normal in that situation of dysfunction. Okay. Um, So this is another quote from him. Summer's going fishing. So that's why he was going with, because Summer's going fishing. Really, can you imagine Summer going fishing? Um, I want to get out of the house anyway for 30 minutes. Is that why he wanted to get out the house, to go fishing, or for something else? Where did they end up going? And then he says, at first I was sitting in the front seat. I think I actually missed that. I think I misheard because I assumed all along Grandma, Summer, and him were all sitting in the back seat and Candace was driving from the front. He, he speaks about boxes in the back. I think that's true because what some people thought was an arm or the side of a shoulder and a sleeve and a shoulder that was actually, I think, the edge of a cardboard box. Um, he can't say how she's dressed. Is she wearing pink or purple? He says, I can't remember how she's dressed, but he's apparently very observant otherwise. He's observant enough to notice when she's gone underwater. Um, he says she had shorts on, oh, she had shorts on at first, she changed in the house and, uh, you know, it sort of mentioned that I guess Candace takes her in the house and, it's, and she's changed discreetly, you know, in a, she, it's not as though she, she's, um, she changes her clothes outside. It's done um, in a very, what's the word, um, um, proper way, right? And then I think he said these words. I don't know if I've misquoted it, but I've written it here. She was dead asleep in the back. I don't know if I've misquoted it, but that's quite a word to use, dead asleep in the back. Is that how people in Tennessee speak? He can observe when he wants, okay? Okay. So that is something I, I asked on Patreon. Is Summer swimming in a bathing suit or in her clothes? Um, and and that the, the reason we're just asking that question is um, it's sort of if, if she's swimming in her bathing suit, it means that the swim was premeditated. And if, if it was premeditated, then Macbeth's version is not true, not accurate, because Macbeth's version is that the swim in the swimming hole was kind of random where they sort of went, oh, we're going to pick up grandma. Okay, the fishing's not going to happen, so let's go and do that. I don't know whether, um, you know, the, the fishing I don't think was ever part of the agenda because no fishing poles are anywhere to be seen. Okay. Um he also mentions very early on they were supposed to go to Jonesboro, where Don is. In the truck, she changed her plan. No fishing. Went with Grandma to the swimming hole. Um, then do you, do you think that he wouldn't know what kind of prescription um, Grandma got? You know, like the whole trip is kind of to pick up grandma's prescription. Do you think he wouldn't know that? Is anyone here with 15-year-olds? Do you think 15-year-olds wouldn't 
know or care about the prescription. Gretchen Klein, thank you, Gretchen. Call me crazy. Um, okay, I don't know if I agree with that. Um, Cole Girl One, thanks a lot. Grandma knows all. I tend to agree with you there. I wonder what Grandma knows about Rose. Um, now, think about it just like this, okay? And this is where you've got to, and I'm certainly not a drug user, so when I say you've got to get into the, the mind of a druggie, I need to do that. Maybe some of you, it comes more naturally to, I don't know. But, you know, if you are habitually using all sorts of substances for thrills, right, you habitually use, so, so let me put it in a, in a more familiar way. Let's say you love alcohol, you're always drinking alcohol, and you go on a trip, and on the way there, you need to pick up a special bottle of, bottle of liquor for your grandfather, maybe it's his birthday, but you're an alcoholic, or, or someone who regularly drinks alcohol. Wouldn't you ask, what alcohol are we picking up? Oh, is it a... Um, uh, Jameson's whiskey, or is it um, Glen Morangy, or whatever? You'd, you'd be interested, wouldn't you? Now, equally, if you're a drug user and you, but you use a lot of drugs, you, you use mushrooms and you vape and you use this and that and that, and now you're going to pick up a prescription drug. Wouldn't you also be interested in what that prescription drug is? Because potentially, who knows, right? Dot dot dot. Do do you guys agree with what I'm saying there? That, that that there is a um, aspect to being interested in the prescription from a certain perspective. Um, even if he didn't know. So Bria made a really good point in her comments earlier where she said something like, um, he was curious enough to look on Candace's phone by his own admission why wouldn't he be curious about the prescription? I think that's quite a good point. Um, there's so many comments. Someone says he is a nosy kid. Aren't all 15-year-olds nosy, though? Aren't even 5-year-olds nosy? Um, so that is something we, we want to know is what was that prescription medication. I think it's quite simple. I think it is pain-relieving medication, and also possibly an opiate. And if it's an opiate, then it's definitely something that can be used um, kind of mischievously. Use grandma's pain medication. And that is a thing that is well known in America, there's the opiate epidemic, and it's very well known in Tennessee. Tennessee is one of the most well known or heavily abusing or prescribed states in America. So the stats certainly back that up. And I think you don't need to be a rocket scientist, you don't need to be a detective to say what's going on here is on the same day that summer disappears, a prescription drug is picked up. Is that prescription drug relevant? And, and it does look like there's a history of intoxication. Is the prescription drug and, in, in, and some kind of intoxication, possibly with alcohol, is that a factor? That seems to be something that is too serious to ignore. It's part of the fabric that we, we know is of the case. Um, that's something grandma could clear up. Grandma, if you're listening, you could put up your hand and say, my medication was X. Thanks, now we know. So, you know, so far everyone has spoken out except grandma. Candace, Don, um, Macbeth, Macbeth's mother, to some extent Macbeth's um, mother's mother, um, I think Macbeth's girlfriend put something on Facebook as well. Um, the church pastor, another church pastor, a church friend, another church friend, everyone is speaking out except grandma. 
What's grandma's story? Someone says, I'd very much like to hear from grandma. Someone else, why is grandma so quiet? Belinda Funden here for. Now, just imagine a situation like this. So um, I don't want to be too conspiracy theory. You've got to be really careful. But in a situation where um, someone is kind of grooming someone else, so, so an, an adult grooming a younger person with, uh, um, with, with certain substances, allowing them substances that they would otherwise not have access to. Could you not also have that younger person possibly doing the same thing to another younger person, right? And you could even have it to four levels in, in a weird way. In other words, Grandma gets a pain medication, which she can give to her daughter, and her daughter can give it to someone else who's younger than her who can... Can you see what I'm saying? It's this really long um, process of ruin, right? But it, it's the same psychology of someone older um, giving someone younger something uh, to whatever purpose, and on and on and on. Vicious cycle, yeah. So, I don't know, the plot thickens, doesn't it? Uh, I'm just going to go through some of my things here. Um, he, he says, he talks about, you know, some of the things that Macbeth says is pretty kind of inflammatory, it's pretty harsh. He says, that Don was talking about some dude stalking other kids and mentions the words, this is a quote, touch the kids. And I think Chris asked him, do you think it's true? And he says, I mean, I think so. Billy, said, Billy um, apparently, uh, this is some other guy. Billy had the hots for grandma. And he says, Macbeth says, I thought it was suspicious um, or something. So, Grandma, definitely, we, we'd like to know a bit more about you. Um, definitely, we'd like to know a bit more. I think they went out to get cigarettes, also for Grandma. They went to the discount tobacco store. One wonders, does Grandma have money? Does, does Grandma pay for some of what Candace needs? What's the situation there? Um, okay, so on to the next page of notes. Uh, she buys nicotine vapes, black and purple, or twisted tea, and it's expressly noted one can of twisted tea. And a lot of people have asked, wasn't it more? They drive to the horse stable. Grandma is sitting in the car by herself. What's grandma doing? If she is sitting on the car, what's she doing? Summer was holding my hand. She's snuggling with me. And then he asks, which TikToks were you watching? He says, I don't know. She's in the bait. So Summer's in a bathing suit snuggling with him. She gave him the twisted tea. Candace gave him the twisted tea. As soon as they got there. So he's kind of admitting as soon as he got there, they just started, or he started drinking or having a drink. And then Chris asked, and I thought this is quite a good question, did you ask for it? Because the question is, who is trying to influence who? Who, who um, what motive is being satisfied here? In other words, is the, is the boy, in other words, what's in it for him? Is, is it the alcohol or is it that Candace says, hey, come along, I'll, I'll, I'll buy you? You know, think about it from a teenager's perspective. Put yourself in, in your own teenage shoes. Um, if someone said to you, come, let's go somewhere, I'll buy you one twisted tea, would you go? What if it was two, would you go? Well, there's got to be some level where you'd say, 
that's worth it. That is going to be definitely be worth it. And what if it was we're going to have twisted tea and that and that and that? Well, this is going to be a party. I'm in, right? Um, he's asked, do you do that a lot? I mean, and I think uh, Chris McDonough then says, no vaping. I know vaping is really bad for the lungs. I think you can get lung cancer so much quicker from vaping than from smoking. Then he says, me and her mom were watching TikTok while someone was swimming, right? So he says he, he doesn't do TikTok and this and that and the other. Um, I think that is a really interesting aspect is what is on this kid's phone? What are the texts? What are the what are what is his browser history? All, all of it is obviously off limits to us. But one wonders what what could it be? What what it, what were you interested in when you were a teenager? Um, what are teenagers in interested in now? Um, but so according to this, he says me and her mom were watching TikTok while Summer was swimming, and then Chris just hits him with this question. Does she like you? Meaning, does Candace like you? And then he answers quite sort of quickly, but also briefly, no, she has a husband, just like that. So his kind of his answer is Candace doesn't like Macbeth because she's 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 got a husband. That's why she doesn't like him, or that's why she's not interested in him because she's married. And I think that raises another question, which is, is there infidelity in this story, right? Where is this proof? So, so that's another thing where we're starting to touch on these questions of, of not just morals and ethics and so on, but the degree of degradation of these morals and ethics. And that's something that is very difficult to, to fine tune along the spectrum. But it's not impossible and we can get there if we spend enough time paying attention. So, so the question is, is there infidelity? And the, the answer is, well, we heard about Billy, who was this um, guy who got so drunk that he would sleep in the shed at Ben Hill Road, and he had the hots for grandma, but he was married. But nevertheless, you get, there's a sense of infidelity with someone and grandma, right? Um, then there's also, we've, we heard this very early on, I don't know if you guys heard the very first interview Don did, it was like 15 minutes with, I think, Times News, really great reporter, go, then interviewed him, I think, a second time. But um, he basically said, that Don said that um, there was a bit of a misunderstanding where, um, where, where they suspected one another of infidelity and then they kind of got back together, right? So I think infidelity is a factor here uh, far more than, than you realize. It's sort of all over. Even Alison said something about, was it Jose who either dumped her for Candace or cheated on her with Candace or something like that. Um, and I was trying to think of the other other men that Candace was interested in, but in some of Candace's TikTok videos, they're quite suggestive, um, especially the one where she's smoking and she's kind of going like that. It's quite suggestive. Who do you think she's trying to um, engage in that? What, what sort of audience, what sort of age do you think she's trying to engage with that? Um, if you bring in something like just infidelity all over the place and you bring in intoxication kind of all over the place, then um, things start to get out of hand, don't they? Right? Yeah. Joe, I agree. So... Then, uh, really, this is a great question. I actually made like this comment here. I don't know if you can see it. Great question. Um, where McDonough says, did you take any pictures of some of that day? Excellent question. And, and if he did, that is going to provide excellent 
um, additional support or information or data or timestamps about what actually happened. And I, I think his answer was that he didn't, that he didn't take any photos. And, you know, what I think is a little bit odd here is all of these people have got cell phones, but where are all the photos? Something I meant to mention earlier, but I, maybe I got a super chat and I got um, distracted, was in that video that Candace takes at the swimming hole, do you get a sense from the video itself that that Candace is totally, totally sober, right? Even if you turn the sound off, do you get a sense from that video where the the colors are distorted? It's not natural color. There are three layers to the what you're seeing, so it's sort of triple vision, some things upside down, um, and everything is sort of swimming like this and then and then um, it's almost like when when the boy walks past her into the water she kind of um, swings the camera down to a flower almost like to allow him maybe he's a bit self-conscious allow him to sort of go into the water and she's going to pay attention to something else and then it comes back to him I think what's also quite interesting in that is how she zooms in on this flower and the flower narrative. I know Bria thinks that the flower narrative is quite important. I'm not sure if, if I agree with that. I think it's also a distraction, a misdirection. Maybe, maybe it isn't. But anyway, in that video, you actually see her zooming in on a flower and then she comes back out and looks back to uh, Macbeth, right? Uh, Rose Coleman, Don hasn't posted his Facebook page since July 14th. I think it's the 15th, unless I'm just getting a, it, it um, based on my local time here. But um, Don and Candace haven't, haven't made a peep on Facebook for uh, like a week, which one wonders what that's all about. Brian says, I think it's probably just a distraction. Okay. Okay, so um, what else have I got here? So you see a point where Summer is underwater. I found that also quite weird how he had to kind of get the information out of, out of Macbeth. So to his credit, he does eventually say, you know what, I never saw her go under the water. So I don't actually know how long she was under the water, but he starts off actually saying that I think she was under the water for four seconds. Now, if you can think of the most harmless amount of time for someone to be underwater, it's about four seconds because two seconds is you wouldn't, if someone sort of dived into water, one, two, you wouldn't do anything. There wouldn't be any need to do anything. Um, three, four is like, well, it's just barely long enough that you would do something. Um, anyway, I think I've dealt with this in another episode. Um, another good question from McDonough was he said, could she have been injured? And the boy doesn't deny it. He says she could have been. Um, I, I hope I've got my notes right here, but as far as I know, McDonough asked him, could she have been injured? And he said she could have been. And when you look at that last photo, it does look like there's a bluish mark here on her head. And it's possible that she could have bumped her head on a, a stump and actually lost consciousness and been under the water for a little while. And then after that, who knows what really happened? Did she regain consciousness? Did something happen? Um, I, I kind of think that that there's a possibility of that because wood that is underwater is sort of soft. The outer layer of wood that's underwater is slightly soft. So if you bump your your head against a log, it may not actually break the surface. That's the important thing to stress is when you look at summer's forehead, there's no, there's no cut, there's no... Um, breaking of the skin. 
So it's possible that she nevertheless hit her head quite hard against a piece of wood or a log where the um, the outside of it may have been kind of spongy and kind of soft, but nevertheless it could have been quite a strong impact. Does that make sense? So I, I'm of the view that the swimming thing is the real red flag and the hot car is the is 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 a misdirection. I don't think the hot car, the heat of that day is relevant. Um, then he says he got spooked and, you know, if something serious happened to Summer, then anyone would have gotten spooked and, and I think that ended the the fun and games for that day. I think what happened to Summer, because bear in mind, his mother seemed to see her still in that condition. So whatever they were doing, Candace and, and Macbeth, um, I think this brought all of that to a screeching halt and and then he wanted to go home. Don't you agree? Twelve step woman, good to see you here. I don't get the swimming. Okay. What news station? Has anyone found, uh, is, is there any news, breaking news on Summer Wells right now? Is, has anything new come out? So a couple of points here. She was underwater. He didn't see her underwater. He pulled her up. And then this thing about he was laughing. That's also something I asked my father when he pulled my brother up out of the swimming pool. Was he laughing? And I don't think he was laughing. Uh, I think it was sputtering, and I think th there was some distress. I think most people involuntary underwater would be not laughing when they came out. What was Candace doing when you saved Summer? So that's the question he's asked. What was Candace doing when you saved Summer? And then he said, talking to her mom on the phone. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, a moment earlier, they were watching TikTok. So me and her mom were watching TikTok while Summer was swimming. He didn't say me. I was sitting with her mom and her mom was talking to her mom while Summer was swimming. That might be nitpicking, but one wonders. So according to him, uh, Candace is talking to her mother on the phone when her mother's just there, you know, in the car. So I don't know, I think there's another possibility is, you know, what could they have been doing if they weren't um, doing TikTok and they weren't, um, what do you call it? Candace wasn't on the phone to her mother. Could they have been doing something else? So he says, I was concentrating on summer while drinking the tea. Do you think that's true? Do you think that, you know, that's the reason why Macbeth is there? What's in it for him? Well, he's, he's there to concentrate on summer and be a lifeguard. He's there not to enjoy himself, not to, you know, drink and have fun, but to watch summer. That, that's why he's there. Then he says, again, did you see her go underwater? No. So your focus was on the TikTok. It could have been longer or shorter. I got her out. Then 15 minutes later, we went to get the prescription. So it's quite interesting how um, how this is framed, you know. So the prescription they got after all of this happened to Summer, one wonders whether that is true. Whether, whether one can verify that. Mediocre comedian. Well, I think this is your third contribution. Much addiction in my own family. Addicts form friendships where they are all involved in a dance and everyone gets a payoff. What is Candace getting? Good point. I think um, how you can kind of address that is you look at Candace's 
social media, and you can see Candace is presenting herself in a certain way. There's sort of a gangster vibe, a sort of a bad girl vibe, um, a sort of a playful vibe, but what is she actually angling at? And I think that TikTok video, which has since been removed, is really suggestive. Um, it's it's really suggestive. And I think she's sort of saying I'm available in a way. I'm available for something specific. And who do you think noticed that? Eternal Flame, where were Summer's wet clothes? Good point. Laurie Talbot, a top medical investigator examined the picture of Summer and said there was no bruising and her lips were pink. She was just sleeping. So if that's true, Laurie, then why didn't she wake up when they arrived at Allison's in kind of in the middle of the day and it was apparently a hot day? Um, why was she still sleeping when they got to the part of the, the road where you see the um, arrow sign and those two um, tree trunks next to each other? Why, why, why was she still sleeping at that point? Living life in Hawaii, good to see you here. Summer would not be swimming underwater in a rocky, murky lake. Um, it's not um, It's not that rocky in that part of it. So, so the part where we actually see her swimming looks like it's more muddy, but then there are also branches there. So... So there's a mixture of, of, of um, so the topography of the underwater part of that of that river, that section of the reservoir is basically mud, underwater or submerged logs, rocks to some extent, especially further on behind that fallen over tree, and then also a drop off. So you've got four sort of aspects, right? Um, Concussion. Lisa Bucken. Yeah. Good point. Connie says, I don't think this grandma was at the swimming hall. I don't think so either. Would you want grandma there? You know, like um, at some point, um, Macbeth says something like, you know, grandma, meaning Candace's mother, was, was quite controlling and not, he didn't seem to have a very nice things to say about her. And also he didn't have very nice things to say about his own, I think, great-grandmother. In fact, he used some kind of expletive. Do you think you'd want a kind of spoil sport? Like if you, if you, if you just imagine, um, like, can you imagine... Chris McDonough sort of saying, okay, guys, I know we were going to do this interview, but let's let, let's all go to the swimming hole. And um, it's probably <laughs> not a very good example, but I've got um, I've got a couple of, of um, smokes or whatever, right? Um, come, let's all go. Do, do you think Macbeth would want, maybe he'd want his mother along, would he want his gra grandmother along? Um, maybe it's a really bad example and in bad taste, but there's, there's some people you wouldn't want along in certain situations. Teenagers are, are famous for that. Um, we're going to do this. No, no, I don't want my younger brother going along or my older sister or, or this or that, right? Um, so, you know, you can criticize me and say, well, I don't know why you're talking about drugs, but if you think about they go to the hippie house and they go to another tobacco store um, and we know from from his own concession that they did buy some of these substances. So what was bought was a was vapes, plural, and um, alcohol. We don't know how much. And... What is the other thing I wanted to say? Um, oh, and the, and the prescription drug could be part of that cocktail as well. There's another thing that we just don't know is, could they have stopped off at a dealer? 
if this was part of the whole thing, couldn't I just have stopped off at a dealer and gotten whatever? Couldn't that have been part of it as well? Candace and Grandma went into um, Hippie House. Grandma also went into Hippie House. Macbeth, so just think about it. Grandma with a crooked knee also went into Hippie House. Macbeth is watching TikTok even though he's not really into TikTok and doesn't make TikTok videos. They spent five minutes in the store, come out with vapes, then they collected the prescription. Where is the pillow? I said, that is a great question. Then they went to Sonic and they got slushies. They're doing all these things, but they never get any food to eat. Um, Sonic in Fort Henry Drive, and then they head to Priceless. So there's a, a lot of going to all these little places. But even if that's true, even if they did go to all of these places, and that's something that, although I'm grateful to Chris McDonough for doing this, I, I didn't really answer the question for me, which is why I asked... Um, what's his name? Toggle. <laughs> can't think of his name. But anyway, my guy on the ground to 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 do to do this. Um, I, I just haven't really had time to go and measure it out. In other words, to to take um, Macbeth's story and then put it into Google Maps systematically and see how much time it. It, it sort of absorbs. So in other words, you literally, as he takes you through his story, you, you take it through Google Maps, the, the time it takes to get from one point to another, but besides that also how long he says that they were then, see how much time it absorbs. And I just don't think it's going to cover from 10 o'clock in the morning till 2 o'clock. I don't think it's going to cover four hours. So you've got a half hour here, a half hour there, that's an hour. Um, I think at some point he said that they spent an hour buying groceries. That's two hours. You've still got two hours left. And then, so maybe you spend 10 minutes in the store and maybe you were at the water hole for another 20 minutes. Well, that's now you've still got a, an hour and a half to account for. And even if you can push the timeline on to three hours, you've still got a whole hour that you need to account for. Palmer Violets, I feel it is all going to happen this weekend. WJHL have the news. I don't know, I've also got a feeling something could happen this weekend. We know uh, there's a renewed search going on um, tomorrow. And um, I don't know, like, uh, I, I think although they're saying they don't have any information, I think they must have quite a lot from all the seized handsets and the numerous polygraphs. I think that the thing they don't have is summer. That's the critical thing. Um, they were in the stores for an hour. Phew, Daphne, I think that's the highest super chat I've ever gotten. Thanks so much. Uh, congratulations on 50.1K. Well deserved. Thanks. Yeah, I was actually thinking of sitting over the glass of champagne. I guess water will have to do. Everyone join TCRS on Patreon for thoughtful discussion and a welcoming community. Thanks so much, Daphne. I really appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Um, they went to the grocers to buy milk. So if they were in the stores for an hour, how, where's all the stuff that they bought? Um, then when did the the orange soda come from? Um, he had the milk on his lap. That's something that um, McDonough addressed in the subsequent video. Did she get out the car? Then he, and this is the part that I found really suspicious. So it's quite a simple question. Did Summer get out of the car when they dropped him off? And then he says, I wasn't really paying attention to her. I just wanted to go inside. Those are his words. Now, consider that. 
I wasn't really paying attention to her to I was concentrating on summer while drinking the tea. Um, where does he say? So I'm just trying to cross-reference that with I show her a lot of attention, not weird attention. Um, but what I really want to get to is where he says something about his... So, yeah, he also says, I want to get out of the house anyway. Now, he really wanted to go out the house, but when he comes back, he really wants to go in the house. Um, but somewhere he says how what, what an observant person he is. Uh, I think I may have written it over here. I just like having my notes so that I'm not... I pay attention... He says, I pay attention. <coughs> he says, I pay attention to things. To remember that. Oh. My voice is going, I think, because we're at the two-hour mark. Um, what else is here? <clears throat> so I'm not going to go through the milk in the middle. That was definitely a factor, but a little bit, uh, uh, quite a lot to go through here. Candace called him at half past seven. It's quite interesting that Candace called him at half past seven. <coughs> she was also calling Robin. And then he says here, <clears throat> when she gets drunk and high at the same time, she forgets that summer was outside. Wow. There goes my voice. <clears throat> Cheers from England. Alison Mother's Head, he wasn't able to explain how he got out of the car and where he was sitting. <clears throat> Cassie, I find it hard to believe drugs weren't... I think I've just lost that comment. Cassia, I find it hard to believe that drugs are not involved in any shape or form, absolutely. He's not observant, but he thinks he is dangerous. She buys him alcohol, babysit the child, does her thing, and question mark. Sasha Johnson, I've been hearing these people left to Wisconsin. Can you find out? Can I find out from here? David Dodson might know. Um, Robin might know. She's also on Facebook. Um, I think Chris McDonough could possibly find out. Sharon Crawford, have we figured out where the boys were whilst Grandma went to hospital and swimming? No, I think that's still uncertain. Laurie Welsh, oh yes, drugs is a big part of the situation. Um, I wonder if H was paid for the interview. Okay, so... How many more pages have I got here? One, two, it's quite a lot. Um, the TBI told me don't contact her. She she shows up here the next day, Thursday. So Candace actually came back there on the Thursday. Tell me what you said to them. My gut feeling is that she had something to do with it. I think that that was a reference to Candy. So I'm not quite sure. I haven't really watched that interview enough. I probably need to watch it again. Um, let me just do a poll here. When he said, my gut feeling is that she had something to do with it, is he referring to Candace, put up a one, and a two if you think it's Candy, the grandma? 
<clears throat> Grandma, okay. She's it's coming out so quickly. Stephanie, a one. I want to say that again. He says, my gut feeling is that she had something to do with it. I'm asking, is that a reference he's making to Candace, one, or Grandma, two? I understood it to mean Grandma. I think he doesn't like Grandma very much, her, um, Candace's grandmother. <coughs> but I'd, I'd need to listen to that again to be absolutely sure. Diane, <coughs> Diane says he meant the grandmother. <coughs> she says, what do you think happened to Summer? And then, then he says, you know how grandmas can be. <coughs> I've got some more water. See, the problem is the air is really dry and cold and talking, talking, talking. So this is one and two. So what well, I've written in my notes here, McDonough asks him, what do you think happened to Summer? And he answers, you know how grandmas can be. They should be locked up for a very long time. She was like my little sister. So I really think he's implicating Candy. And who's been the one that has been quiet all along? So, so who is the real black sheep in the story? Is it Macbeth? Is it Candace? Is it Don? Is it Grandma? Is it Don's son? Don, Don's um, son that's somewhere else. Who's the, who's the real black sheep here? Patricia says, Nick, you need to stop or you'll end up ill. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I do need a vodka shot. I've been doing a lot of talking. When I when I don't do these lives, I'm recording audio books and it's quite a lot. Yeah. Um Candace, okay. So he also says I'm good with tech. He goes to Candace's photos and her trash. He says, I seen 13 messages from her and her drug dealer. This seems to be him throwing her under the bus, doesn't it? Saying Candace, meaning, you know, Summer's mother, um, she's the one. Look at her. Then he says, do you think Don was at work that day? Then, um, I don't know. I think that's a question that came up in chat um, that hasn't been verified. I'm not really going to talk. So that's really the end of the of that section of it. I'm not really going to talk about um, the live, although I had a lot of comments written down here. Um, someone said, when, when he said, I like to mess around with people, what does that mean? What does it mean when you say that? Um, so, you know, another way of, of putting it is um, hanging around. What does hanging around actually mean? You know, Midnight Sun, thanks a lot. Thanks for that. Um, so this is where I, where I started with part two. Um, I don't know if I'm going to really deal with this right now. I, I think we can maybe do it in a live tomorrow. It's quite a few pages. Wow, it's really quite a few pages. There, there are quite a few observations I've made there. Um, but I think we we already been talking for two hours. I think I'll deal with with a part two maybe tomorrow. So this is what I want to address as a kind of a conclusion to the whole Macbeth thing, right? And it's on the question of standards, right? So. It is difficult to look at this family and the people that we are dealing with and know how to look at them. It's quite difficult to, to say, okay, how do we need to approach this? Okay. And 
I think the way that you do that is you you bring in this word standards, right? And how you do that is you say, what are the standards of these people of of Candace, of Macbeth, of Macbeth's mother, of of the Wells family as a unit, of the Harris family as a unit, what are their standards in terms of ethics? What are their standards in terms of morals? What are their standards in terms of honesty? What are their standards in terms of health? What are their standards in terms of things like medications and substances? What are their standards in terms of things like discipline? What are their standards in terms of things like moderation and excess, right? And I, I think, um, you know, a word that I regularly use uh, in terms of this case is resignation to describe the effect of the wealth funding, but also um, excess. Excess is coming up again and again and again, right? And... I don't want to be mean or disrespectful or unkind or or um, rude, but I also don't think you can avoid this. I, I don't think there's a way that you can kind of just say, I'm not going to go there because it's a bit of a, a minefield, right? So so I, I'm going to go there, <laughs> but but I'm, I'm going there under the... The, the sort of banner of standards, right? And I want to speak in kind of a, a jargon where you know where I'm coming from, and I'm going to say something without actually saying it. It's, a, it's the most respectful way I can do it. It's basically to say, when you look at that interview with Macbeth, and you can see his mother sitting opposite the camera, and you, you can see some of Macbeth's silhouette and sometimes more than that, and then, then at a certain point, his mother steps away and you can see, um, I think it's his grandmother. I don't know if it's his great-grandmother, but you see another older lady. And the question comes up, what are the standards of, of all of these people, this lady and that lady and this young man, what are their standards in terms of things like health? What are their standards, all, of, all three of these people, in terms of moderation? In, in general, do you think these people exercise? Do you think when they do certain things, do you think they do them excessively or not, right? I think, let me just look at some of your comments. I think Ali and Macbeth have things to hide. Okay, interesting. I actually think Don is, as I said in the previous video, in the previous episode, I think he's trying to control the narrative. He's trying to control who says what. I think that's quite interesting. Um, so, so I think the question is, individually, with Macbeth, his mom, and, and that other lady, what are their standards when it comes to their own health? What are their standards when it comes to substances? What are their standards when it comes to honesty? What are their standards when it when it comes to friendships and relationships with different people? I mean, his, his mother at that point has got a grudge kind of with Candace, but nevertheless lets her son go and play the way she understands it with Summer. What what are the standards that are going on here? You know, when he's asked, um, when when Macbeth is asked, did Candace drink? He responds, she didn't drink because she doesn't drink and drive. Now, if we take the, that issue of standards, do you think that applies? Do you think that Candace would say, let's go to the swimming hole. You guys drink how, however much. <clears throat> you guys drink, you guys vape, you guys do whatever. 
I'm going to not do any of that because I don't drink and drive. And so I'm going to, I'm going to behave. Um, Stephanie says they do not take care of themselves, their children or the animals. And in that respect, their standards are quite low, if, if that's true. Now, you might think that that's a criticism to say, or, or it's unfair, you know, you don't know what they're going through, and they don't have the resources, but it doesn't matter how rich or poor you are, you can have standards for yourself. It doesn't matter how educated you are or not, whatever your situation, you can have a certain personal standard in terms of how honest you decide to be, how fit or healthy you decide to be, how much substances you decide to use, how much you decide is excessive and how much isn't, right? It's got nothing to do with anything. It's it's a personal decision you make, and to some extent it can be cultural. I mean, we know, you know, there's certain countries that consume more beer per capita than any other country. So it can be a cultural standard as well. But nevertheless, it comes down to standards. Um, and so in terms of that, we want to look at this idea of excess. And I think in terms of the standards of these people, all of them seem to be prone to excess. And without being mean, when, when I look at Alison, she seems to be, um, there seems to be something going on that's excessive, whatever it is. And, and the same thing can kind of be said for everybody else in the story. Um, and when it comes to Summer, you can almost say the opposite, is that Summer needed attention. Summer was clingy because some kind of excess is going in one direction when she's here. She wants attention. She wants care. She wants love, proper love, decent love, a duty of care, all that kind of thing. And she's not getting it. That's why she's clingy. Her environment is unstable. Her environment has got excess in it, unhealthy excess. She wants something that is good. And she, she feels like she can kind of get it from Robin. Right? She wants something that's balanced and and good and healthy. And she can, she can sort of feel that she can get that from Robin. Something that I think is just so crazy is this whole idea, Summer wouldn't wander off. And you, you see both Don and Candace on camera saying, Summer wouldn't wander off. You know, she, she just wouldn't do that. And yet you see her wandering around the church. Yet in this TikTok video, she's the only one in the water um, she's kind of drifting off in the water on her own. The other two people are kind of on land. She's doing her thing. And she is a free spirit. But she, she is someone who will sort of wander off, right? She's five. But Don is saying that was her downfall to me is critical because I think that is exactly what was her downfall, was that someone was playing. Someone was playing, and so that was her downfall. Why? Because someone else wasn't paying attention. Why weren't they paying attention? Because they were doing something excessively. Uh, Lords, I have no idea how to say your name. Lords Perez, I wish I did, just to say thank you. Love your channel. I like your way of explaining what's going on in this case. Thank, thank you very much. So look at some of your comments. Tracy, I'm glad my voice has recovered a bit. Got almost no water left. I think Macbeth does, does absolutely what he wants to do with no parental guidance, except some from the great-grandmother he said was grouchy. That is such a great point. I wish I could give you a super chat for that. Um, yeah, Dana Hinton, great point. Poor definitely doesn't equal neglect. Love is free. Um that's another excellent, excellent point is that, you know, if you, if you don't have certain um, boundaries in terms of your own behavior, in terms of your own habits, if you don't have 
certain kinds of self-discipline or discipline for someone else, then you do think you can do whatever you want to do. Well, wow. it's the first time I've ever gotten a call in the middle of a live. Hope it doesn't happen again. Um, so do, do you follow what I'm saying? Um, I, I do think that he is with his mom because he can do whatever he wants to do, and he was. That, that's why he was in Tennessee. That's why I think he's still there, because he couldn't do that in New York, right? Um, let's just look at some of this. Quit bringing welfare into it. Welfare doesn't equal neglect. Addicts are bad parents. Hello, I love your channel. I'm watching from Eastern Kentucky. Sunshine Glenda, Kentucky. Is it hot there? <laughs> Raymond, good, good, uh, good, good, good point there. Lisa Arnold, hopelessness, excess and addictions. Gigi Jardine, I'm supposed to be washing dishes. Are you not washing dishes? Deborah Davies, hello from Australia. Why do you call him Macbeth? Can someone else answer that question? I actually am starting to feel like I prefer that name even though we know his other name. You know, it sort of almost feels more right, doesn't it? Um, what else have I written down here? I can't go in, I'm under age. Um, where are his TikTok videos and photos? Um, yeah. Okay, so, so I don't think I'm going to take it too much further than that. Um, I'll do part two either tomorrow or Sunday. You guys can maybe let me know which day you'd prefer. Stephanie and the mods, let me know which day you guys would prefer. Maybe maybe Sunday would be better. Um, so I want to just uh, conclude this by giving my recommendation. It's not rocket science at all on the, the search for summer, on, on what they can maybe do to improve the, the, their chances, the odds of, of finding summer, right? And my advice is quite simple. Use the community. Use the massive amount of public support. Use the, um, the fact that this is such a high-profile case means People want to get involved. People want to help. We already know that the TBI are resource constrained. They've got budget problems. I understand that law enforcement have a thing of, you know, we need to track where we're searching for through terrain. We need to kind of cross off that part from the grid and be absolutely sure. I think we passed that point. I think 38 days later, they've got to acknowledge that they are in a bit of trouble and they need to um, they need to accept help from the public. And that means allow people from the public to, to assist with searches and do whatever the public want to sort of offer. And you had that in the Stephen Avery case when they were searching for Teresa Holbach. Uh, you had that in a big, big way in the um, Nora Corrin case, where actually a member of the public, a hiker from the public, found Nora not a professional searcher, not someone from the military, not infrared uh, or ground penetrating radar, not sniffer dogs or anything like that, right? So you can get people from the public and and especially locals who know the area really well, and you can kind of divide them into sort of groups. The, the, the fit sort of mountain men characters, they can go into slightly more difficult areas. The other people can kind of, you know, you know what I'm saying? And um, have the community involved in the search. It's time. Um, and you don't want to wait too long for that to happen. In the, in the, um, 
Suzanne Morphy case, arguably it was too long. And one thing I didn't really like about um, Chris McDonough's, um, what, he, what he said yesterday was, I think he was talking about a cold case and, and he was fingering his shirt and saying he's from this foundation. It's too soon to be talking about a cold case. The Suzanne Morphew case shows you what can happen as long as a year later. So you, you don't even say those words um, barely a month later or even six months later. After a year has passed, then you can maybe start saying cold case. But really, it's, it's not a cold case at this point, far from it. It's, we know a lot. I'm certainly a lot more positive than I think law enforcement are. You know, you don't need a body to, to solve a case. Um, the Patrick Frazee case proves that. Um, what you need is evidence and information, but also make a real effort to search, and that needs to happen now. And I, I think it is sort of happening this weekend, but if, God forbid, this weekend is a failure, then I really think we need to bring in um, volunteers, the public. And I'm sure there are lots of people who want to volunteer and who want to be involved. Um, and so that's my recommendation. And I think, I, think there, I think something may happen this weekend. Something seems already to be brewing in terms of the sudden incommunicado on social media from three members of the Wells family. Jesse's escape, I'm in, exclamation mark. Evelyn Guymom, I find his story sketchy when he says he didn't notice Summer when he got out the truck. Why wouldn't he say goodbye to her? Absolutely. No, it's absolutely. Kathy Bellella, I don't know about that. I don't know about the boys. I wouldn't be surprised given what has already happened, but I don't know that for a fact. Deborah Davies, I totally agree. Carla, Jean Fedder, Summer, we won't give up. That's true. The House of Cards is falling. Heather O'Brien from Australia. Heather, I was wondering where, where you were. Thanks a lot for that. <laughs> Melissa Sue, I've been saying that since I heard it, okay. Stephanie says, Heather Bryan, you rock. You, you do rock. Thanks a lot, Heather. Um, it was on the news about boys. Okay, I'm going to do a quick search to see what I can see here. I don't see anything. Rescuers give Hawkins Commission a report. Four hours ago, non-profit search and recovery group prepares for return to Hawkins County. Yeah, nothing about that, sorry. You know, a lot of people are dismissive about the mainstream media, but the mainstream media are credible often. And in this case, you know, there's no reason why they, why they wouldn't be. So pay attention to what mainstream media says. What I'm going to do probably tomorrow is I'm going to put up a, a video on some of the search photos that, that no one has seen before, um, which I think may be quite interesting. Well, we've got 905 likes. I wonder if we're going to get to 1,000. I must say I'm really grateful to all of you who've um, participated this evening, which is where I am at half past 10 at night. Um, but this afternoon where you are, I'm really grateful for you guys showing up. Um, thanks so much for your questions. Thank you so much for your contributions. Mods, thanks for uh, keeping everything safe and sound. Um, I, I, I feel like we've got quite a good community here who behave and, and know how to um, engage with one another. So that's always uh, gratifying. Um, Donna Hinton, thanks from Kentucky. 
Hello, Brian. It's 6.30 a.m. I've had no sleep again. I pulled an all-nighter. Well worth it. Okay. Um, well, I sort of feel bad, but also feel complimented. Um, but don't worry, I'm going to be signing off in five minutes, Heather, so you can go to sleep. I'm going to be going to sleep quite soon, too. Um, Chris McDonough kept me out of sleep until past two o'clock in the morning, my time. And I was waiting for part two. So, well, he certainly succeeded in, I think, what he was doing, which was get people watching. Tallulah, what a nice name. Thank you for all you did. Thanks, Tallulah. Mazoka, thanks, Nick. Sandra Boma, like your channel. 1.30 p.m. in Seattle. Well, you've got the whole afternoon ahead of you. What are you guys going to do this weekend? It is so cold here. We, we're having our coldest week of the year. Um, very, very cold this week. Definitely having – there was a very big swathe of, of – we get cold fronts from Antarctica being in the Southern Hemisphere. So we get these big sweeps of ice cold cloud that sweep over and bring with it snow and cold weather. And that, that's what we're going through here. <clears throat> in a weird way, I feel grateful for cold weather, given what's happening with the climate. You know, if it's cold, then it means in a weird way um, that some systems are still working. SM Kovalinsky, great presentation as always. Thanks so much for that. Yay, snow. We don't really get snow where I am. It's a bit too dry for that, but not that far from me. No, I'm in South Africa. Type in Wells Boys Taken. Okay, let me try. Let's see what comes up. No, it's nothing. I don't know. Maybe if, if you type it in on Facebook, I don't know. There's nothing in the mainstream media. So if you guys want, I can do something like I did tonight with the notes that I took on the um, McDonough reconnaissance thing. One thing I'm just going to mention here that I, th that I think is also quite important to bear in mind is I think the searchers need to search the creek right beside the house at Ben Hill Road, not just that area right below the house, but the course of that creek going one to two to three miles further on. Because um, I think that um, if summer has moved, she may have been moved by storm water. That was a theory I had in the Nora Corrin case, and Nora Corrin was ultimately found in water, and so was Tom Hastings, another guy from um, Tennessee, was found in, in, in a stream, another missing person. Wow, we've actually hit a 1,000 likes. I think that's a really great note to, to end on. Um, again, thanks, everyone, for being here. Bria, um, by the way, this is something I meant to say. Now that we had 50,000 subscribers, there are going to be a couple of changes on this channel, good changes. One of those channel, one of those changes is I'm going to be doing a StreamYard thing. I'm going to be inviting some guests on. I'm really looking forward to having Bria for, on, for example. She's got a beautiful voice. She's uh, really knowledgeable about these cases. And so you don't just see me and hear me. We, we're going to have some, some guests on, but also some of our super patrons on as well. So that's something to look forward to. I also want to start a, a book club, um, maybe once a month where I talk about some of the books that I'm enjoying and maybe occasionally writing, but uh, where we, and also hear from you, what books you're reading and enjoying. And that's something that I think would be quite cool every now and then. So StreamYard coming soon to, um, true Crime Rocket Science, um, maybe we'll do the first StreamYard next weekend. So not the next live, but the, the next live after the next live. <laughs> so that's definitely something to look forward to. It may be a little bit of um, baby steps and, and growth, growing pains because I've never used it before, but um, I'm sure once we've gotten into it, it shouldn't be too difficult. 
I actually want to do StreamYard with someone who's done it before. So that's that would be cool. Candace has had a lot of bruises on her arms in the video of Summer Sleeping. Diane Harlow, hi everyone. Diane, bye. <laughs> I'm about to leave. Cassio G says, can we make guest suggestions? Absolutely. Um, it's, it's not always that a guest wants to go on. You know, that's also the other thing. Tam Bennett, that's nice. Okay. Miss, Miss, Miss Demina, I love your, your name there. Miss Demina. Good night from Wales. Um, Q, we had our first chat with five to six participants a year and a half ago. That's true, but not using StreamYard. Patricia Burns, see ya. Everyone who's been kept up out of sleep, I hope you have a good sleep tonight. Jen, just Jen, hi from Oregon. Jen, bye. <laughs> 1,337 watching. Yeah, that's pretty good. Good to have you all here. Diane Harlow, sorry I didn't get the notification. Diane, I would say unsubscribe and then resubscribe and hit the notification bell. Sophia Candias, hi from Portugal, just, just subscribed tonight. Welcome, Sophia. Sophia, are you following the Madeleine McCann case? Have you read my book, Doubt? I actually visited Portugal in 2019. It was, I really want to go back. I really enjoyed it. Portugal feels a little bit like Africa, got good sunshine there, good scenery. E. Miller, Nick has the best accent. Thanks, E. Miller. Susan Brewer, StreamYard rocks. Great news and good night. Stephanie says, hybrid Pisces, most welcome. Pink Pink Studio, I really enjoyed tonight. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, guys. Um, Mom, me, you need to pay more attention to your chat. I'll, I'll do my best. Have they found Maddie? No. I don't think they ever will. Uh, Bria, I like your accent. So, you know, maybe we should do a chat together and see who people prefer to listen to. Um, Stephanie also has a, a great speaking voice and a great mind. KVM, I've visited South Africa, really? Okay. Okay, guys, so that's it from, from me. Um, keep your eyes peeled for content coming up tomorrow on this channel, dealing with the search, new search footage that you probably haven't seen before. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. But otherwise, have a wonderful Friday. Remember, the Olympics have just started, so all sorts of things happening. And let's hope the um, the searches um, catch a break. Let's hope that um, that they stumble on something that 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 uh, you know something fortuitous happens. It, it feels like it, it might, doesn't it? Okay, guys, thanks for listening. See you guys next time. Ciao.